at 33,000 yen, yes, this is very expensive, but this has to be the best looking Chunni figure of all time. And I'm including resin figures. Hi and welcome back to the channel, welcome to this week's figure news fix. We'll be taking a look at anime skill figures as well as third party resin figure pre-orders between 24th to 29th of July 2023. Today, 30th of July is Wonder Festival Day. I'm very busy with coverage over in my Facebook page and I will make a separate video on the highlights from this event, maybe several days later. For now, we will focus on the week right before the event and one would think that figure companies would be really busy preparing for the event but instead, we got a crap ton of figure pre-orders this week, like way too many to cover. So yeah, without further ado, let's jump into amiami.com and as usual, the top in the rankings. Well, this week's rankings is no surprise at all. First place, Nandroid, <laughs> Marine Kitagawa. Yeah, that one comes with a, a very familiar face plate and I told you guys to go and pre-order one even if you don't collect Nandroids. Yeah, that very familiar beloved face plate we all see in our favorite H anime. She comes with one somehow. In second place, not surprised either. Bochi the Rock Hitori Goto. This is a an affordable figure under Tenitol series by Full Wheel. Like under 6,000 yen or so, 6,000 yen plus. Uh, yeah, because there are no genuine skill figures of her yet. The one by Good Smile is still in prototype stage. And then in third place, that is a re-release Persona 5. Of course, it is going to be popular. Fourth place and sixth place, we have something from Hunter x Hunter. Hunter Cross Hunter. Well, a classic anime, right? Very popular one. And this anime was <laughs> replayed to death over in some anime streaming channels over here in Asia, like Animax channel. In 7th place, we have a B-style figure 1x4. I'm not really familiar with that character. And rounding up the top 10, yeah. Two really good figures in 9th and 10th place. Chun-Li from Street Fighter. That is perhaps the very best Chun-Li scale figure I've seen so far. 10th place, that is also one of the better 1x4 skills by Free Ink in the past month or so. A lot of skills making into top 10 this week. On 29th of July, only one single skill figure, this one right here, Gao Daishuki holds Ayaka-chan 1x6 skill by Bishop's Gondo. Normally 19,800 yen but there is almost 3,000 yen off if you are pre-ordering this one early. At 1x6, yeah, 1x6 doesn't mean much for a figure that is sitting and kind of, you know, curling up like this. This is still a small figure at this skill. Which is why she is pretty affordable, right, for a 1x6 skill. Mm. I don't find this figure to be, like, unique or attractive in any way. Yeah, she is cute and that is about it. So this is a tiny 1x6 skill at only 14 centimeters. 14. <laughs> Seriously, this is just so infuriating. I've just done editing a video at 12am in the midnight on a Sunday. And I've just discovered Ami Ami added another few figure listings on Saturday. And now I need to rush this section out. God damn it, I still have Wonder Festival to cover tomorrow. Anyways, the, the next figure over here, my Sakurajima. I need to rush this section out. This is a 1x7 skill by Spiritil. White Mandarin dress version for almost 32,000 yen. Actually, the very same figure came out less than a year ago. I think back in February this year. But that was blue color, yeah, this one right here. So now we're getting a repainted version, white dress, which looks very nice to be honest. If you have missed out the first release, this is your second chance over here. She does not look bad at all with this new color scheme over here. And this figure of mine, the first release back in February, is one of the very best figure of my Sakurajima ever made, period. I myself am not a very big fan of my Sakurajima, but considering that this one is event limited, this is Wonder Festival limited, I might consider picking one up and placing a pre-order. You see, yeah, this one will begin pre-order on sale soon on July 30th, 11am Japan time, which is about 9am my time over here. So you might want to consider pre-ordering this one before you miss out. I don't know how many of them they have in stock with this one. And then the second figure, which is also on sale soon. This 
figure of yeah, Himiko Toga. Also by Spirit Tail, but this is a sepia color version. I really like the color scheme over here. 27,500 yen, same thing. Pre-order pre opening today, 30th July, Sunday, 11 a.m. Japan time. Once again, the original version of this figure, which also just came out many months ago, it was excellent. It was amazing. One of my friends bought it. And here we go, a second chance as well. Pre-order one if you missed out on the first release. I like how the chains over here on this figure appears to be rusted. So this is a very nice figure of her. Go for it. For me, I'm not a fan of BNHA, so I will be skipping this figure of Himiko Toga. Now we move on to 28th. As usual, Fridays, a lot of figures. So let's go through them one by one. The first one here, Dai Kashoku Jidai Yusei 1x6 scale at 26,400 yen by Amakuni, which isn't a bad price for 1x6. This one is about 26 centimeters. And she is coming out in June 2024, so almost a year away. So this is a JK, a schoolgirl with yeah, swimsuit underneath. Though that full body uh single piece swimsuit, which is really nice. I do like this one. Mm. Some of you are going to buy her just because of those thighs and hips over there, which I can totally understand. For me, I think her face. Yeah, I kind of like her face. As for how this entire figure is as a package, yeah, I kind of like it, you know, like she, uh, her school uniform is half open and then her skirt are kind of rolled up in the middle. This is kind of nice, something different for once. Yeah, I would love to have the figure really, if I could. Up next, we have four variants of this figure, more like two variants and each of them has an Ami Ami bonus version. So this is... Gyu Tomioka DX version at 1x8 skill by Bell Fine, 35,300 yen. Yeah, obviously the problem here is this figure is by Bell Fine. And they seem to be taking a page of <laughs> Eastream and Shibuya Scramble figure with all those effect part being a main feature of the figure. If we put aside the quality concerns with this brand, when you look at this entire package, this entire figure as a whole, including the base and so on, 35,000 yen actually makes sense. But as usual, the problem I have is the brand behind this figure. I'm not really confident about them. And as for the face of this figure, this gear over here, I think Mega House did a better job. Which is no surprise really. He still looks fine over here, but from some angles, it looks a bit weird. Like this angle over here, I think it doesn't look like him that much. But then, this angle over here, he looks fine again. Yeah, this one looks okay too. So I think viewing angle is a factor over here. I don't think the figure is overpriced to be honest. I mean, it is to be expected with a base like this. But my concerns lies with the brand behind it and if you are not interested in ami ami bonus yeah you save about 2000 yen or so and then there is a version with a simpler base going for 22000 yen and without ami ami bonus just under 20000 yen i still think it is quite nice of belfine to give us a decent base over here which still looks great on a cheaper variant of a figure they're selling instead of nerfing and gimping the figure way too much, giving it a very ugly plastic black disc base maybe, just to force people to fork out more for the expensive variant. So I really appreciate Belfine over here with this figure of Gyo Tomioka, despite my reservations about their brand. Up next, we have Ayakashi Triangle Matsui Kazamaki 1x7 skill by Furyu. This one is exceptionally cheap for a Furyu figure at just under 20,000 yen coming out in September 2024. This figure may be exceptionally cheap for a Furyu figure but by no means this is an expensive or complex figure. In the end, we are just looking at a school girl sitting on a school desk. Yeah, and that school desk, you know, costs like a dollar or two to manufacture. It doesn't cost much, actually. I'm actually quite surprised that it is <laughs> Furio who did this figure instead of Kotobukiya. This looks more like something Kotobukiya would do, right? As for whether you should pre-order this figure, I'm not too sure. I'm kind of surprised that an 
a seasonal anime which is very slow we have like seven or eight episodes now i think there were issues with the production i think we are not getting new episodes every week for a period so i have no idea what is going on i'm not too well informed with the anime world over here but this is a seasonal anime and they are making a 20,000 yen skill figure for a seasonal anime character. I'm not sure if this is going to sell well, but what do I know? Maybe it is different over in Japan at least. Up next, this is a rather nice one. From Toho Project, we have Serno Summer Frost version by Solar Rain at 1x7 skill, almost 20,000 yen coming out in March next year, 2024. Personally, I'm not sure if I would want a figure of a Toho character sitting on Desert. Uh, yeah, feels kind of a mismatch in theme over here, right? I would still prefer the classic Japanese theme uh, for the base, but this is still a really nice figure for under 20,000 yen. And for Toho fans, I would still, yeah, I would still have no trouble recommending this figure to you guys. Solarin is actually, yeah, they are also working next to Good Smile, another branch of, they are kind of independent, just like Fat Company, but they are related to Good Smile in some way. This reminds me of those dessert series of cute figures by Weibo, a Chinese brand. And alright, up next, from Heaven Burns Red, we have Tama Kunimi at 1x7 skill by Furio. I think this is the second or the third figure from Heaven Burns Red. Interesting. This one is going for 22,200 yen coming out in April 2024. Now you see in these product photos taken by a proper photographer, yeah, the figure looks nice, right? But, but don't let that distract you from the very fact that her other leg is being supported by a really huge plastic god over there. To me, the pose of the figure looks kind of weird. Like, yeah, this is an action pose kind of, but... The figure seems to be leaning on, uh, towards the left side a bit too much. Yeah, I'm, or maybe it is just the viewing angle. It is leaning a bit too much to my liking. You see, the figure is like not slanting towards the other side. From this angle over here, it looks a bit more natural. But yeah, back to this angle over here, I think <laughs> I'm not really sure how to describe it. But anyways... Just like a number of other figures I've commented in the past, I think the same applies to this figure. If that right leg over there is supported by a rock or maybe an ice peeler or any other things that can duplicate as a diorama, the entire figure would look a lot better and I wouldn't mind paying an extra 1000, 1500 yen just to complete the figure a bit more, right? It makes the figure feel less neglected, like you focus all attention on the figure and then the base is like a second thought. Up next, from Uma Musume Pretty Derby, we have Kitasan Black at 1x7 by Kotobukiya. This one is getting a pretty nice discount over here, 22,000 yen down to 18,500 yen. Yeah, you're saving 3,500 yen here, coming out in April 2024. I'm no fan of uh, Uma Musume. I don't see myself buying any figure from this series. But for this figure over here, what is up with the base? <laughs> yeah. Uh, does this character, like her favorite food is pancake or something like that? I have no idea since I don't know anything about the character. But why is the base like this? Like, you know, five layers of plastic over there instead of a single sheet of round disc base. Why five layers? I think it has to mean something. If you know something, let me know down in the comments below. It has to mean something, right? This is a really good purchase. I love the details on her outfit. Kotobukiya is guaranteed to get her face right anyways. So we look at the outfit and everywhere else. Yeah, this is a pretty nice figure. You kind of get a lot of details there but not much shading. But I don't think that details in her outfit makes up for it. Up next, another seasonal anime skill figure from Shikimori-san. Not just a cutie. Yeah, I think that one ended the last season. So we have Shikimori Sun summer, summer Outfit version Standard Edition 1x7 skill by Miyoki. So they are implying that there is a limited version, maybe Wonder Festival Limited, I'm not sure. And this is the one figure that does not make sense at all to me in pricing. 25,000 yen for a simple figure like this. 
yeah, that is before discounts. But still, when you look at the official price, it does not make sense at all. She might be getting a nicer base than usual, that good surface texture on the base. But in the end, this is a figure so plain and simple that I don't see this one being worth more than 16,000 yen maybe. So the official price of 25k is bad enough and the discounted price of 20,000 yen plus is still plenty overpriced in my opinion. This figure is one of the most absurdly priced figure this week. Make no mistake. So I don't think I can recommend this figure at all until it bargain beans after release. Assuming that it happens, I think there is a high chance that she might be in because this is seasonal anime stuff and by the time this figure comes out <laughs> 9 months later, how many people will remember her again? And those who do, those who place a pre-order, they might have even lost interest. So no, this price does not make sense at all. Up next, from Fairy Tail, we have Urza Scarlet Seduction Armor Special Finish by Union Creative. This is non scale, but about 18 cm. 18 cm in this squatting kneeling pose, it is very close to 1x6 scale, right? So, 21,340 yen, yeah, it is pretty reasonable. Urza Scarlet, uh, <laughs> well, I'm not a fan of Fairy Tail, so obviously I won't be attracted to this figure. But this is pretty good value, assuming that Union Creative gets their QC done right. There has been so many skill figures of Urza that I'm not really sure anymore which one I like better. I think Belfine, was it Belfine? They have a very nice figure of her with full armor and even a huge flag and so on, but then that is Belfine, unfortunately. This one over here, yeah, fan service stuff. So let's move on to the next figure. Chaesu Original Character Mina Swimwear Version 1x7 Skill by Enso Toys. 17,000 yen coming out in December, which is very soon. But yeah, Enso Toys is a pretty new, br uh, new brand. They haven't been around for too long. And in the end, this is also just, yeah, just a bikini figure. The details on this figure is kind of lackluster, if I have to be honest. At least she is only 17,000 yen. To me, what I'm seeing in this figure is that this is just a swimsuit figure and nothing else. Not a bad purchase if you know something about the artist behind this character, but to me, she doesn't really stand out enough. Up next, we have a pop-up rate of Hololive Production Watson Emilia, 4,600 yen. Yeah. I can't recommend pre-ordering pop-up rates as usual, but for Hololive, you might want to make it an exception. Is she a doctor or what? Detective of some kind? The, the way the character is designed over here, the vibes I'm getting over here is a bit like a detective, <laughs> an investigator of some kind. Uh, what do you call it? Sherlock. Yeah, feels like I'm looking at Sherlock Holmes. That, that is the vibe I'm getting over here, and maybe I'm not too far off. Character design-wise, I like it a lot, and I am really curious with how Good Smile is going to get it right with her dress over there. The detail on her dress over there, and that small clock in the middle, that is no joke for a pop-up weight figure, that is a low-cost figure. The Japanese, they don't care about the quality of the figure, all they care is the character. So if the character is popular, even if it is a badly made pop-up rate, the pop-up rate will go up to 9,000, 10,000 yen after release. It already happened to Korone. Yeah. Up next, another pop-up rate, Grain Lagan Simon Youngman version. At 4,080 yen, yeah, wait for after release. Grain Lagan, you don't have much choices though. Uh, I mean, skill figure companies, they are not bothered with classic anime anymore, right? So pop-up rates are one of the very few ways to go with if you want a figure. Up next, another pop-up rate. Yeah, this is seasonal anime. Ana Yamada, 4,080 yen once again. Wait for after release. Man, can you finish two ice creams where there are six scoops of them over there? That is too much for me. <laughs> too much. Now we move on to 27th of July, where we get quite a number of scale figures too on this Thursday. The first one here, B-Style. Oh, okay, 7 Deadly Sins. Now I remember her. 
Amakuni and Aokid Sid used to make a set of 1x7 scale figures from the 7 scenes and they were amazing. So this one over here is Belial, Bunny version, 1x4 scale at almost 40,000 yen. This is a figure where you buy it, not for the face, but for something else, isn't it? I mean, look at how much emphasis they put in these product photos. Look at the angles taken over here. Yeah, look at this angle. <laughs> I'm not too interested in this, but this is one of the more unique poses I've seen among 1x4 skills by Free Ink. And you'll see even the other character, there is a lot of emphasis on her backside. Up next, okay, so this one over here, uh, KD Cole Saber Outer Baby Doll Dress version at 1x7 skill. This is a Kadokawa special set, if I'm not mistaken. No, no, this is the normal version. The special set is over 30,000 yen. So this one at 1x7 skill, 27,500 yen. And even as a fan of the Fate series, I don't think I would touch this one. It does not cost much to produce all those pillows over there and that base over there. But this one is <laughs> 27,000 yen. I don't think it is worth it to be honest. Not to mention it is kind of out of character. You see the entire figure is only 15 centimeters tall head height. The base is about 22 centimeters. So this isn't a big figure even at 1x7 scale. 27k feels a bit too much over here. There you go. This is the special set where she cost almost 31,000 yen and you're getting this, this block over here. This acrylic block I think. A picture of her is being etched inside this acrylic block and why would I need that? Yeah. So I'm skipping this figure as a fan of the Fate series. The next one here, this is a re-release and if you love child marriage, this is your second chance if you missed out the first release. From Fate, Khaled, Prisma, Ilya. Yeah, we have Ilya's real Von Einsburn wedding bikini version at 1x7 skill, only 16,500 yen. Lollies are cheap after all. I know that depending on the timeline in the Fate series, she might already been 18 years old. But nonetheless, yeah, you get the points over here. If I want a really controversial figure of Ilya, my all-time favorite is the one made by Amakuni. Came out 5 years, 6 years ago. Together with Kuro as a pair, they are wearing almost nothing and only skimpy bikini. Yeah, it is not customable, but it doesn't matter. That one is so rare and expensive nowadays, not impossible to find though. But you can expect to pay 40 to 50,000 yen for a set. And I don't think I can justify that amount for a pair of lolly figures. That pair of figures remain one of my biggest regrets as a figure collector for not being able to afford them because back then I was just a college student. I couldn't afford so many figures every month and that one, yeah, I did not pre-order that one. So is this one by Kadokawa a good alternative for me? Uh, yeah, it is still a decent alternative but it feels like an inferior version of the Amakuni one, which is kind of sad for me. Uh, that is the typical life of a figure collector, right? You can't have everything. Up next, from Tenital, we have Hitori Goto from Bochi the Rock, 5,500 yen. While I normally can't recommend pre-ordering pop up rates, for this one over here, Tenital, which is very similar to pop up rates in a way, I do think this is one of the safer pre-orders if you choose to go ahead because this is a figure where there isn't much details going on compared to that Sherlock Holmes Hololife character earlier. She is wearing a plain jersey, a plain black skirt, yeah. And her eyes are pretty big too. Like those K-On characters with big eyes. So I don't see Tanital messing up this figure. In fact, I think at 5,500 yen, this is better value than even pop-up rates because with pop-up rates, you're getting that hexagonal ugly base, right? This one, at least you're getting something over here. So yeah, go ahead and pre-order it if you like her. Up next, from Overlord, we have Sheltier Enway Gasho version at 1x6 skill by Kaitendo at 27,700 yen. Quite a surprise to me to see Kaitendo making a figure of... Uh, <laughs> of an overlord character. Kaitendo usually makes X-rated 
uh, characters from illustrations and so on. Yeah, a bit like other X-rated figure brands. Out of nowhere, they're making something by Overlord. They have to be desperate for some easy money. Yeah, just like Daiki Kogyo suddenly out of nowhere making a figure from Azalane when all the while they have been making X-rated uh, original character figures as well. Kaitendo is a B tier, B minus tier figure brand though, so you wouldn't want to have too much high hopes on this figure, I'm afraid. I would say that if the figure turns out to be exactly like this promo pictures over here, but not better, not worse, it is already a pretty good achievement by Kaitendo so far. Kaitendo's figures, they are usually not that detailed, so I'm interested to see how they do with the outfits over here. Almost 28,000 yen for 1x6 may seem reasonable, but this figure is a lolly character and she is only 12 centimeters tall, so this figure is starting to feel rather expensive. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Up next, I believe this is a re-release. I think I've seen this figure being released before in the past. By the also banner, we have Kai Han from Bastard Heavy Metal Dark Fantasy classic as well, just under 20,000 yen. When I look at the hairstyle of this character alone, <laughs> it feels old. It feels like I'm looking at something from 1980s or 1990s, or maybe even older than that, right? I mean, when you look at Gundam series like those from Universal Century, you look at the character designs, they look like something from the 60s and 70s. <laughs> you won't see modern anime girl character designs with a hair design like this one. <laughs> But that, you see, look at the back. Her back looks fantastic over here. The front, yeah, it is a bit pedestrian, but then, hey, this is not a bad figure otherwise. The pose is quite nice. Up next, more pop-up parades from Hunter. Is it Hunter X Hunter or Hunter Cross Hunter? Anyways, we have Gone Freaks over here, 4,080 yen. I still remember how expensive his 1x4 skill by freeing was, 50k, 60k. And then the next one here, yeah, Kiloa Zoldik for the same price. Can't recommend pre-ordering really. This one will be widely available after release. Up next, another pop operate from Wataten. We have Hinata Hoshino, 4,080 yen. Very cute girl, but then same thing as well. Can't recommend pre-ordering it. Wait for after release. The next one here is a re-release from Persona 5. We have Futaba Sakura at 1x7 by Fats Company. Almost 14,000 yen. This is a really old figure, which is why she is so affordable. They already have the molds. They just have to reuse it. This figure, I think she came out between year 2012 to 2015 or so. Yeah, very old by now. This is your second chance for those of you who missed out back then. Maybe because you were not a figure collector yet. And now you are into a hobby, but the figure that you want is no longer available. Yeah, here you go, the second chance. Fat company had a habit of neglecting their lower cost skill figures back then. But despite that, this figure of Futaba Sakura turns out pretty okay, even in the past. So this one here is a pretty safe pre-order, if you were to ask my opinion. Doesn't take much commitment, very cheap figure indeed. Up next, alright, this is also a re-release in some way, more like a second color version. The very same figure came out many years ago, but her outfit was like white color or very pale pink color. Now it has changed to red color. KD Call sort out online Asuna Negli Gi version, event limited color 1x7 skill for 23,000 yen. I remember seeing this figure being exhibited in a local event here. Must be back in year 2017, 2018 or so. This one is a limited version, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, the sale period is only until August 6. You only have a week to pre-order this one. This is far from my favorite Asuna figure. I don't like her face at all. But understandably, this is based on some cover art on the light novel. Not how she looks like in the anime. Now back to this page, we move up to 26th of July, Wednesday, where we have more scale figures over here. The first one over here, this is one of the better looking 1x4 scales in recent month or so, and I would love to have one on my shelf even, despite the rather monotonous color, black, white, and grey over here. 
Barney Reno 1x4 skill from Azalane. Yeah, it is mentioned here Union Creative, but Union Creative is probably the one distributing the figure and Free Ink manufactured it because they call it B-Style, right? B-Style is Free Ink's trademark and no other brands can use the same trademark. So this is a Free Ink figure. 44,000 yen. I do think... Uh, it is actually reasonable. The normal price nowadays, the normal starting price is 38,500 yen or so. This one is just a bit of extra because of that stool she is sitting on. So I think the price is pretty reasonable over here. Seriously, I would love to have one even though I don't collect Azalene and trying to resist from doing so. <laughs> this is so photogenic, man. I would love to photograph this figure. Up next, okay, so we have affordable figures coming from Square Enix now. This one is a non-scale figure of 2B from Nier Automata, but at non-scale, this is 30 centimeters tall. This is a 1x6 scale for just under 11,000 yen. This is what they call the non-goggles version, and then this is what they call the goggles version. Goggles, really? I call it a blindfold, personally. <laughs> Yeah, she can see through that blindfold anyways. So it is interesting that a tall, huge figure is going for 11,000 yen and one of you told me in my Facebook page that most likely Square Enix is doing the same thing as Animaster and even Good Smile with Pop Operates. They are not using PVC exactly, but other cheaper materials, some cheap plastic. But then more choices for consumers isn't a bad thing, so I'm not going to complain. The only problem is that this is made by Square Enix. Their reputation isn't really good when it comes to quality control. So we'll see. The next one here from Fruits, Full Cute R. I have no idea what is that. We have Lemon Bunny version 1x4 scale by binding at 44,000 yen. Yes, this is fully customable. A number of you mentioned it in the Discord groups I was in, in my Facebook page as well, that it is weird that Ami Ami now is putting binding figure on the front page of their website, their international website, because they don't want to sell these figures to us filthy gaijins because of the stupid rules in our countries banning this and that in the name of morality. <laughs> Alright, so there are two possibilities over here. The first one here is that binding insisted <laughs> Ami Ami to sell their stuff because otherwise they would be losing out on a huge market over here. And the second reason, which I think is the more likely reason over here, is that this is a pretty safe for work figure, at least on the surface. Like the figure is fully clothed. She is not even close to being nude. And I could ship this figure to my office, to my workplace, and open it in front of my boss even. So yeah, this is the kind of figure where it appears to be pretty safe and normal to everyone else except to those who are in the hobby so they know what it is actually. And the last one for 26th of July, I think this figure has been on pre-order for a while. She is coming out as soon as October 2023, so I have no idea why Ami Ami put it on the front page. Maybe they have a lot of leftover vacant, vacant slots in their pre-orders, so they are hoping people would pre-order it by pushing the listing up onto the front page. I think I covered this one before. This figure of Tea Time Cat's British Short Hair by Weibo's Chinese brand. This series of figures are amazing. They are not very sophisticated figures. They are not very detailed, but they are a joy to look at when you display them. And at 8,000 yen, yeah, this is a very good purchase. That is all for 26th of July. We move down to 25th of July. More amazing scale figures, especially this one. Yeah. From Street Fighter, we have Chun-Li at 1x6 scale by Max Factory. And at 33,000 yen, yes, this is very expensive, but this has to be the best looking Chun-Li figure of all time. And I'm including resin figures, yes. Yeah, there has been so many amazing resin figures of Street Fighter characters. Some of them are so over the top, you know. All those complex base, giant base at 1x4 scale. But... Despite how amazing those figures are, right? It feels like they have never captured that <laughs> that true chun that that real chunli look. I'm not sure how to describe it in words. Like you are looking at something that is 90% chunli and that 10% is missing. 
this one right here, this figure right here captured her perfectly. Yeah, like very accurate to the source material. So this figure of Chun-Li, man, I love it so much. I would love to have one. I used to play Street Fighter a lot. Nowadays, not so much. My favorite characters are still Cammy and Jury. I mean, my, my play style, my game style, right? I am really bad at using characters that need charging. Chun-Li is one of those characters that you need to charge before you can unleash an, a combo or an attack, something like that. So I'm really bad with her. I never really used her in the game. But as far as character design goes, yeah, I love her just as much as Cammy or Jury. Will she bargain bin in the aftermarket? I can see discounts, but bargain bin, like 50% off, I would say very unlikely given that there are so few Chunli figures in the market. Kotobukiya used to make a really affordable figure of her that uh, Bishoujo series, right? They were like 12,000 yen each, but that was so long ago. And that figure is nowhere close to the amount of detail we are looking at in this version of Chunli over here. The next one here, another 7 scene figures. This is Mammon. Bunny version 1x4 scaled by freeing 39,600 yen. Once again, yeah, you buy it for that ass rather than the face. But to me, both are equally important, right? I don't really have much of an opinion on this one. I hope that, yeah, she is car stoppable, the front part. Look at that. <laughs> I think among all the seven scenes characters, Mammon has the largest S, if I'm not mistaken. So it is no surprise over here. You see, they are putting so much emphasis on where it matters. <laughs> yeah, but I still won't be picking up this one, unfortunately. <laughs> the next figure over here is something that the FBI definitely does not like, but I like it a lot. Kate Kudasai Goshujin Sama illustration by Koma Mochi Momozu, 1x6 skill by Daiki Kogyo, just under 20,000 yen. Yeah, this is definitely an FBI trap, but she is so adorable. Mm. I wonder how many people would be outraged and angry if I were to post this in my Instagram and Twitter. You don't see that much uh, SJWs overreacting on a page by Daiki Kogyo, for example, because there aren't many <laughs> gaijins there in the first place. Unlike Good Smile Company, where it is a very mainstream figure brand, Kotobukiya as well, so whenever they post something just a bit controversial with the figure, the character design, they will attract a lot of unwanted attention because they are quite mainstream as a figure brand. Daiki Kogyo, yeah, I think outside of the figure community itself, I think no one have heard about them. And then here we have a slightly cheaper version without the Ami Ami bonus, only a thousand yen cheaper. Up next, I wasn't expecting this at all. Is Good Smile going to make a series of swimsuit figures from Blue Archive at a low cost? I would really welcome that. Even though, yeah, I told you guys so many times I'm not interested in plain, boring looking swimsuit figures, bikini figures. But Blue Archive, yeah, I might give a select few characters a bit of a chance and buy them even. This one, I'm liking this one quite a bit. Suna Okami, Shigoko at 1x7 skill, just under 12,000 yen. This is bargain. Go and pre-order one if you love Blue Archive. At the time of recording of this video right now, which is a Saturday, the event is technically tomorrow, I am predicting that Blue Archive is going to get a lot of figure announcements. Blue Archive is the next big thing. After FGO, Arzalane, Arknights, Girls, France Line, and as recently as two years ago, Genshin Impact. There will be a lot of Blue Archive stuff being announced. Yeah, Genshin has been quite lackluster actually. There are not many figures in comparison. Blue Archive is going to be really popular. And it is quite surprising that it has taken so long for the figure industry to recognize the potential of this game over here, this franchise. With this figure, the only thing I don't like is that God sticking out from a head from behind. But the good news is that, yeah, you can't really see it from the front. So I guess that is a non-issue, right? Up next, we have a trio of 1x6 skill figures that are very affordable for some reason by Animaster. We have Wine Waiter Girl over here, 1x6 skill. She is around 26-27cm tall or so. 
And this one is just under 8,000 yen, which is amazing. And then the second one over here, disciplinary committee member, one by six skill, 7,300 yen from the same brand. One by six skill as well, around 26 centimeters. And the third one over here, vice city female sheriff, one by six, 6,640 yen. I'm very curious about them. And from what you guys told me, they're using cheaper materials, like something cheaper than even PVC and ABS. So it will be interesting to see what the figures turn out like. This is encroaching into pop-up parade territory, but better value for money because these are very tall figures indeed. Up next, we have a pop-up parade L, Goblin Slayer. So I find this really interesting because the normal Goblin Slayer, the normal pop operate, was of a different pose. So Good Small Company actually bothered to make a new figure, an entirely new figure, just to increase the size from normal to L size. The easiest way is to just take the existing version and then just enlarge it, right? But they did not. They made a new version of the same character, which is kind of interesting. I suppose that this figure is so easy to paint, you just spray paint metallic silver all over. But this looks exceptionally detailed for a low cost figure at 1x7 scale almost, they're about 24cm or so. I can recommend it if you want to pre-order one. This looks amazing and I don't see any chance of Good Smile messing up this figure over here. Up next from Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, we have Tori Meidos at 1x7 scale by Amakuni, just under 20,000 yen. This figure at 20,000 yen is so overpriced, I really can't decide now. Just now that figure earlier for 25k or this one for 20k is more expensive, more overpriced. This one is 15,000 yen tops for such a plain and simple figure. Yeah, Amakuni, I know that you guys are good. Very good at what you do, but please, this one, 19,800 yen, can't justify it. The next one here, this is a re-release and a very good one. I highly recommend this one. Dai Kashoku Jidai Filena Wall 1x7 by scale by Amakuni for also 19,800 yen. Ami Ami, why did you even try to censor this? This is very safe. Anyways, the proportions, the body sculpting on this figure is fabulous. The backside there, that round ass over there is fantastic. And the face on this figure is great as well. I've seen this figure in person before. This is a really well-made figure by Amakuni. And do remember, this figure is cast off a bull, right? Making that 19,800 yen even a sweeter deal over here. Go and get one. Here we have a limited edition with a microfiber towel for 21,300 yen. So that is totally up to you whether you want to pay an additional 1,500 yen for some merchandise. The next one here, this is a non-scale figure of Lala Satalin Devaluk nurse version. But she is pretty tall, sit sitting like this, 25-26 cm. This is at least 1x6 scale by Union Creative. And she is only 21,000 yen. So this is not a bad purchase at all for fans of To Love Rule. I have already stopped collecting To Love Rule figures. I even sold off my entire set of Max Factory To Love Rule Bright series. I'm keeping only a few characters by Amakuni and Outer. Yeah. To Love Rule has a special place in my heart as an anime fan because it is my very first edgy anime I've ever watched. I think around high school age, right after I finished my high school, uh, right after I finished my college entrance exam. Back then, I only watched mecha stuff and then my friend introduced this weird stuff to me and insisted that I watch it. And ever since I gave To Love Rule a try, I stopped caring about what anime genre I come across. I stopped caring what the summary is like, how weird the summary sounds like. Just watch it and decide later whether to watch it or not. I'm not going to get this one. I already have a really nice figure of Lala by Outer, the maid one where she is even flipping up her skirt for you to show, for you to see her pansu. That is a really nice figure of Lala. And I still prefer that one, but this one is great value at 21,000 yen. And then the last figure on Ami Ami for this week, this one is one of the worst figures this week. Swimsuit Girl Rofewa, illustrated by Ibi Kim, 1x7 scale by IA Toys, 10,500 yen. 
when I look at the pictures of this figure over here, right, I don't feel like I'm looking at the figure. I feel like I'm looking at a CGI render, even when it is not. This is indeed a figure we're looking at. And that is often not a good thing, right? Some resin figures, their official product photos, as well as figures by Fox, Japan, and Beeful, they have this similar look where you look at their product photos, you feel like you are looking at half a figure, half a CGI render, and you're not sure which is which. And that is quite a red flag over here. I don't know. The sculpt on this figure is also kind of lacking. The details are lacking. This is a very affordable figure. It is just under 11,000 yen. But despite the low cost, I don't think I can recommend it. Yeah. Now we shall move on to NininGame.com to check out some figures that were not on Ami Ami. As usual, there are quite a bunch of Nikan Shoujo figures by Insight which are very X-rated. Uh, this one right here for example, go and check it out yourself. I'm not going to put it on screen. And there are four figures I would like to talk about a bit on NininGame.com over here. The first one, yeah, this one is also quite X-rated for me to put on screen. Kanbi Mayomu original character by Native and Frog, 36,000 yen, which is pretty expensive. This one is for you guys who love MILFs, who love MILFs, I guess. This is not my type of figure, so I am definitely skipping this one. This should be a 1x6 skill. 1x5 skill, okay. I take back my words. 36,000 yen for a 1x5 skill is actually not bad. The next one here, original character Nezupoyo Pop Girl, 1x7 skill, limited edition by Treat and Good Smile Company. Good Smile is probably just the distributor. And because this is a Good Smile online shop exclusive, which is why it isn't on Ami Ami, almost 22,000 yen. Though this character design is just so weird, so eccentric. Her eyes look like, yeah, stained glass window you see in chapels, church, and so on. So I really can't bring myself to even like the character design over here. This is just so weird. <laughs> yeah, what do you think about her eyes, man? I can't get over her eyes over here. Up next, we have a couple of big booby figures by none other than Kyo6. They are huge figures but very affordable. Say Yariman Gakuen Pako Pako Niki 2021 Ray at 1x6 skill, only 21,500 yen. So this is the White Life Matters version. And then we over here, we have a Black Life Matters version. So make your choice, make your pick. Which one do you prefer? I hate both. I really hate figures like this. Like the proportions are so weird. This is way too much for me. And then now we move on to Aniplex Plus. This week we have four exclusive figures on pre-order in Aniplex. The first one here is a 1x7 skill of 2B from Nier Automata. The standard version is only 18,000 yen and then the deluxe version, luxury version is 26,000 yen. And you really need to pay for the luxury version just to get to see her face with her eyes over there instead of being blindfolded, right? And when I see this figure on Aniplex, I like it so much, but it also got me thinking. What took genuine anime figure brands so long to make a high quality skill figure of 2B? It took them way too long. By now, there are maybe over a hundred different variants of figures of 2B in the third party resin figure market. But yeah, I really like this one a lot, made by Amakun, uh, Aniplex over here. This is really nice. And the price of 26,000 yen is just right. Will I pre-order one? I'm still trying to decide really. To me, I believe that it took them so long to make a skill figure of 2B until now is because the anime series of Nier Automata just finished airing very recently. It has to do with the anime. That is my guess over here. Up next, we have a pair of low-cost, non-skill figures from Licorice Recoil by Aniplex. 4,800 yen each for Chisato and also Takina. I can't find the dimensions of the figure at all over here in this page. I'll, I'll have to check out my figurecollection.net later. But these should be rather small figures, I think. And I wouldn't bother by this. I would rather save up more and go for the more expensive skill figures of Licorice. Recall characters like you know the pair made by Good Smile. 
they were like 16,000 yen for Chisato and 18,000 yen for Takina. That is the best deal for those of you who are kind of budget conscious, right? And the last figure over here, hell yes, a 1x7 skill of Kama. Uh, this is the portrait dress version from FGO. This figure is not made by Aniplex, by the way. This is made by Glenel. Uh, 23,800 yen is just right for a 1x7 skill figure. Reasonable, I would say. So I am going to get one after release. I don't see myself pre-ordering it, but I'm going to keep an eye on this figure. You see, we are not getting a plain disc base over here. At least we're getting something over there. Yeah, this is this is a must-have for me this week. And that is all for anime skill figures on pre-order this week. So many, I'm so exhausted by now, but we still have to cover third-party resin figures for the week. As usual, we'll make use of our affiliate partner over here, Oz GK. For every resin figure I am about to cover, there is an affiliate link below if you are interested in pre-ordering any of them. Now let's head over to the website. Alright, now that we are in the website, as usual, we'll scroll down all the way near the bottom. Yeah, right here and we have the newest pre-orders section. There are a lot of figures over here, but I have hand-picked those figures I want to cover. All female characters, right? Otherwise, there are too much things to cover. And the very first figure over here is already an excellent one. And to me, this figure right here is one of the bargains this week for third-party resin figures. From AYW Studio, we have, yeah, Ganyu from Genshin Impact. I know we have had many Ganyu figures already by now, even among third parties. So this one over here, the interesting part is the pricing. The figure looks great, but at 1x4 skill, she is only 287 US dollars, which isn't far off a freeing 1x4 skill pricing. You can also have her at 1x6 skill for a more modest 175 US dollars. So, right, so the face of this version of Ganyu, yeah, it looks great over here. This is like anime look. I'm not a fan of realistic human-like face look. So this is anime look over here. Castoffable, of course, because that is a main reason for buying third-party resins. This kind of pose, right, where the girl, the main character, is stretching her legs wide, this isn't a new pose. Even among genuine figures, there are quite a number of them out there with a very similar pose. But hey, you can get one for 1x4 skill. Up next, this is a very early bird figure pre-order. No proper pictures yet. Bright Studio Nami from One Piece. No price yet. And this is all we get. Just a teaser pic. Yeah, she is part of this set apparently. I'm not really a fan of One Piece. So let's move on to the next figure. Now, this is a really good original character figure. This is great. Very detailed. From Joy's studio, we have Mobile Suit Gundam Machine Girl. This is Zaku 2, right? Zaku Girl. And, man, the price... Oh, let's have a look at the price first. This one is going for 424 US dollars. 1 by 6 skill. Yeah, 1 by 6, but 400 plus USD. It is pretty expensive, but once you see the pictures, you understand why. Now, since when did Zaku look so good? Her legs over there are... Uh, all the strappings, all the belts around her legs. And then the rifle, she's holding the base as well. This is an amazing original character design we're getting over here. Ah, she is holding an axe behind. The, the hit axe that Zaku uses. I still prefer her with this look over casting her off completely because this is how you get to enjoy the details of the figure. Yeah, this the face expression is a win to me as well. I think... No, an eye patch covering one eye suits this character so much. Yeah, this is also one of the better figures this week. Let's move on to the next one. This is a licensed resin figure. Innate Art Studio Ghost Blade. Look into the distance, Hai Chin Yen. Okay, so there is a pure edition going for 836 US dollars. Must be 1x4 skill. And a deluxe version, a thousand a hundred and thirty-one US dollars. Wow. Even the pure edition doesn't look too bad already, but the deluxe version is quite overkill. Getting an entire stained glass window behind her as a prop. 
I've no idea who this character is. Must be one of those characters from a Chinese light novel or RPG. MMORPG? I'm just guessing over here. This is what I call a realistic face look, right? I'm not really a big fan of this, but I can understand the appeal. Some people really like figures like this. The next one over here, this has to be one of the very worst resin figures this week. Though she is only 59 US dollars, but why bother even? Uh, this studio with a very long name that is so difficult to pronounce, they decided to make a resin figure of Jean Sheltius. Sheltius, right? Is it Stella Tears? Anyways, from Fantasy Star Online 2. While this is very affordable at 60 bucks, I would say go for the one made by Kotobukiya. I think that one is getting a re-release and that is an excellent figure of her. And even if you did not manage to get your hands on the one by Kotobukiya, there are other brands out there that made a PVC figure of her. You see, the problem I have over here is that assuming that these are official product photos, which I think is unlikely because it was taken with a smartphone. Look at the bottom left, Honor V9. It is taken with a Huawei phone. Uh, Honor is a Huawei phone. And then the second problem over here is that the quality control is not good and we can already tell it from these product pictures over here. Product pictures. Uh, let me bring up the third or the fourth picture. Yeah, this one right here. I'm going to put a red arrow over there. Can you see that gap between her bikini bottom and her right leg or right thigh? If that gap is there, present in the official product photos, do you think the final product is going to be better than the prototypes, than official products? Uh, of course not, right? <laughs> so when we are already seeing seam line issues with these uh, official pics, it doesn't give me any confidence at all that the final product is going to be any better. So I would say stay away from this one. The next one here, we have a trio. Three Honkai Star Rail figures over here. These are all very early bird pre-orders. We don't even have enough product photos yet. And of course, there is no official pricing yet. The first one here, May Studio, Sile or Seal. Uh, yeah, I don't know how am I supposed to pronounce her name. This is the only picture we are getting over here. And presumably that is the other character which will be going on pre-order soon. And then the next one here from Yin Yuan Studio, Ting Yun from Hongkai Star Wheel as well, and we get only a teaser pick, but this one looks very promising, right? When I look at the rear at the back of this figure, I am already really attracted to it. Nice photography work, by the way. So I'll be interested to visit back this page days later when we get more pictures, right? And the third one here from Tong Studio, yeah, we are also only getting a real view picture of the figure, we can't see the front yet. So perhaps wait for more official product pictures before deciding whether to place a deposit and pre-order one. Up next, this is interesting, a third-party resin figure of Hatsune Miku which you don't see very often. I think the past month or two, I've only seen one single third-party resin figure of her. And that was uh, a realistic interpretation doesn't really look like Miku at all, right? Because there are so many genuine Miku figures already which are really well made. There really isn't much of a reason to go for third party ones. Unless they let us strip down the figure nude. <laughs> yeah. So here we have from Siyuan Kuang Xiang Studio, Hatsune Miku Heart of the Sea, going for 153 US dollars. I don't think I can recommend this one either. This is not a very detailed figure. I could easily come up with three figures of Miku in mind, three PVC figures, genuine figures that look way better than this one, which is why, like I said earlier, I don't understand why they even bothered to try because this is going to be quite a tough sell. Up next, more blue archive from Yinji Studio we have Ryuge Kisaki uh, going for 175 US dollars at 1x6 presumably, or 1x7 scale, all right. Uh, $175 for 1x7 skill, but this is not a very good looking figure of her as well. The one by Dodomo Studio, that was an easy win over this one, right? I have a problem with the face on this one. It looks pretty weird to me. And yeah, the details on her outfit, the Chinese dress, is pretty poorly made. If I had to be true to what I'm thinking in mind, I'm not going to mince my words. I'm not going to be sugarcoating whatever I say, to me, 
the outfit, the body, the torso, the body sculpting, everything is just horrid over here. 175. <laughs> Come on, at least have some curves around her ass, man. I mean, Dodomo Studio did a way better job, even though I don't trust them yet. This is not a good one. Up next, we have something really interesting over here. This is a licensed figure. And actually, this figure was announced just days before Wonder Festival. This figure right here is part of Wonder Festival. But as usual, you know, third-party resin figure stores, they love taking very early bird pre-orders. Even though we don't know about the official pricing of the figure yet. They do this a lot. You can already reserve one if you want one really badly. That is from Test Studio. We have Nikkei Alice from Goddess of Victory Nikkei. Alright, no official price yet, of course, but let's check out the pictures over here. I would be lying if I was to say I'm not interested. I am very interested. But no licensed genuine resin figures are just bloody expensive. Crazy expensive. Man, I want one so badly. Oh, yes! Best ass of the week, right there. I want one! Not to mention the details on her outfit is outstanding. Yeah. This one is going into my watch list. And then after we see the price, then I'll decide what to do with it. Because they are already asking for a 200 US dollar deposit. And deposits are typically between 20 to 30%. Which means this might end up being a 600 to 800 US dollar figure. And I am really afraid that might be the case. Uh, oh, 1 by 4 skill. Okay, this is going to be 800 US dollars. And I can forget about my dream of ever owning one. This is really sad. Come on. Is there anyone who, who will give us a skill figure, PVC figure of this one at 1 by 6? I'll be happy with 1 by 6 really. Up next, this figure might be free of charge. I mean, FOC Studio, really? Haruko Akagi from Slam Dunk. The full price, unfortunately, is 181 US dollars. Right, classic old school character, not very detailed. 180 bucks, I'm not very sure. That is all I can say. It feels pretty expensive to me. Up next, okay, this is, oh, another Ganyu figure. PP Jiang Studio, uh, Ganyu in the bathroom. So there are four variants over here, right? A, B, C, and D. This one starts from 190 US dollars for figure and base only, and nothing else. And then there are partial and full dioramas at various price points, all, all the way up to the maximum of 283 US dollars at 1 by 6 scale. Okay, so let's have a look over here. This picture over here, this is either package B or package C. This is a partial diorama where the figure is surrounded by acrylic and then there is a shower set, a shower curtain and a base over there. And if you go for the full diorama, yeah, it looks something like this where you actually get brick walls, mosaic tile walls surrounding her. So to me, yeah, I would still go for the full diorama set if I had to choose, but Really, this acrylic option isn't bad either because you can keep the figure inside surrounded with a plastic acrylic box and you just have to put something on top to cover it and the figure will be free from dust yet you can enjoy looking at the figure. So this acrylic option over here, which is the mid-tier option, is not really a bad choice either. Really up to you if you are interested in the figure. Yeah. This is the most realistic one, of course. This is what bathrooms look like, but you won't be able to see the figure unless you leave the curtain open. <laughs> yeah, this is the deluxe package, the ultimate package, where you get both. You get the solid wall and also the acrylic box. Yeah, perhaps the deluxe version is the best one to go for if money is no object. The next one here from Wonderland Studio, we have Inuyasha Fighting Stands. So with this one, the standard version starts at 321 US dollars, high-end version 379, and deluxe version 441. And the thing with Inuyasha is that if you have a low budget, there are pop-up rates for you. But if you are looking for something a bit higher end, right, then I'm afraid you are stuck to yeah, expensive resin figures. Though there are quite a few options in the market, this is just one of them right here. 
and you can even display the figure as a bust figure over here. Yeah. Okay. This. Ah. Okay. This is a high end version. I'm assuming right here. And they, they actually have a chart. Yeah, here you go. This is a chart for the standard edition version. Okay, you're already getting a lot for the standard edition over here. Not bad. So this set up over here with an option to display the figure as a bust. Not bad at all. Okay, and then let's... This is the advanced version. Hmm... I think I'm just getting more accessories, more different parts, right? Like there are two heads over there, one with her hair tied up and one let loose. And finally, deluxe version, basically every single optional part in other variants, you're getting all of it, two bases as well. So really up to you which one to go for. The next one here from Crazy Cat Studio, Tokyo Ghoul Yoshimura Eto, very early but pre-order, no price yet and no product pictures yet. It is based on this illustration over here and this is a very interesting one because I haven't seen any new Tokyo Ghoul figure in a while other than Kaneki Ken. It is always just Kaneki Ken. And this character over here, yeah, she is pretty hot and attractive to be made into a figure. I can see quite a few number of people buying this one. Up next over here, okay, this is really interesting. From Max Milk Studio, and this is a licensed resin figure. Another world fantasy succubus, Amy Fukada. Is it that Amy we are talking about? That Amy which every man on this planet loves? I don't think it looks like her at all. But we need more pictures over here, right? This is, this is just a very early bird pre-order as well. We need more product pictures. Up next, from ZX Studio, or ZX Studio, we have Haruko Akagi once again from Slam Dunk. So you are getting 1x6 skill for 210 US dollars, very expensive, and 1x4 skill at 340. Pretty expensive, but at least this figure of Akagi looks better than the other one. I wanted to say that her shirt has a very nice texture on it, but at the same time, it feels like I'm looking at her wearing carbon fiber. So I'm not really sure what to say now. <laughs> yeah, now it looks a bit more like fabric. Does not that picture looks like carbon fiber texture to me? Oh, this brand is making a lot of figures from this series. Very interesting. And we're actually getting a picture of the actual head sculpt of this figure. It looks really good, right? So perhaps 1x6 skill at 210 might be pretty expensive, but at least this might turn out to be a really decent figure. Up next, from Jack's Do Studio, we have One Piece Boa Hancock Special Effects Accessories. So over here, uh, you can actually get the figure for 581 US dollars, and then there are a bunch of accessories where you can pay separately, purchase separately. 59 bucks, 69 bucks for this effect part. This picture over here, this is the entire figure, the entire set, or you can buy the accessories only. Mm. This should be only 1x6 skill, right? Can't be 1x4. I'm not really sure because the skill isn't mentioned over here. But 623 bucks for the whole thing. I'm not really sure what to say because I'm not a fan of One Piece. If I would say this is a 1x6 skill because, you know, there are so many things going on and at 600 bucks, it can't be 1x4. The next one here, we have a figure of St. Louis from Arceline by Rainbow Studio. 1x4 skill for 475 or 1x7 skill at 174 US dollars. This is far from the best St. Louis figures I've seen. There has been so many third-party resin figures of her. This one is just somewhere mid-tier, somewhere in the middle, right? The details are okay, but not really outstanding in any way. This is a rather mid figure, if I have to be honest with you guys. Uh, I'm not sure if I can recommend this one at all. Up next, we have a licensed resin figure of chun -Li from Street Fighter by Avalon Continent Studio. Going for 688 US dollars at 1x4 skill. Actually, at this skill, 1x4 and being a licensed one, right? This entire setup, including that huge chair, that tree over there, 688. Very reasonable, really. It is a good price. 
once again, despite me saying the price is a very good one, of course I won't be able to afford one. I would drop 25,000 yen on that Max Factory Chunli earlier. Yeah, 25, not the official 33k price tag. However, Chunli isn't the kind of character where I would drop 6, 700 US dollars on, right? This is a great figure for those hardcore fans of this character. The height is 63 centimeters, including the tree branch. That is insane. Length and width 47 and 43 respectively. You need a lot of space for this one. This is like a centerpiece figure. The best figure in anyone's collection usually. Up next, from Yao Ming Studio, we have Boa Hancock from One Piece. You know, One Piece is like the rum and ram of resin figures. <laughs> you don't have to count how many of them are there because there are way too many. And this one, once again, is a very early bird pre-order. No pictures yet other than this one where, yeah, the body looks really good. I've told you guys before, third-party resin brands, they are really good with One Piece figures. So wait for more pictures before deciding. Up next, we have ah, Babel Tanit from Genshin Impact. This is by Atlas Studio at 1x6 scale. All right. Uh, okay, there is no official price yet. 500 bucks can't be 1x6. I think this is a 1x4. Yeah, 1x4 scale. My bad. So there is a polyurethane type PU type with accessories package for 500 US dollars. And then there is the silicon type for 600 US dollars. Yeah, silicon type is the material you find on adult toys, for example. They are very like human skin and more expensive as well. Babel Tanit is, this is possibly the first figure of her I've seen from third party brands. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, everyone's just making Ganyo, Yae, Miko, <laughs> uh, who else? But this character, yeah. I haven't seen anyone make one yet. Of course, she is going to be customable. Texture on her outfit, of course. At this scale, you need texture or the figure won't look good. The figure won't look detailed at all. For the character design aspect, I'm not really a big fan of it, right? I'm next. Okay, we have... Uh, this is one of those <laughs> cringe figures. I'm quite surprised that this isn't made by TXS Studio. Okay, so from Odd Studio, we have Original Fantasy Series Horrock. No official price yet, and this is the only picture we are getting because this is a very early bird pre-order. Yeah, this is something for, for the hardcore. Those people who are so hardcore, they have weird fetishes. This might be something for you. Not my kind of figure, really. The next one here, very unusual, we are getting a third-party figure of a Toho character, Remila Scarlet. The full price on this one for the normal version, 287 US dollars, 1 by 6. And there's a special version for 344. The difference is just the base, by the way. The standard version, you're getting a simple acrylic round disc base. And then for the limited edition, yeah, a diorama base, right? Now, this one over here, the face looks great. So this might not be a bad purchase. Otherwise, for genuine figures, right? QuestQ. QuestQ has been making quite a number of excellent Toho figures as well. Details. Details. I love them. Okay, so we are getting more pictures of the base over here. This is what the special version base looks like. Yeah, uh, this is what the base looks like for the special version, right? To me, it does not make any sense at all to save 40 or 50 bucks and buy the normal version with a plastic disc base. If you want a figure like this, go all out and buy the special version. Get a better looking base. It does not cost that much, right? The next one here, we have another figure of Air Gear. We have so many figures of her in the third party resin figure market as well. And this one right here, unfortunately, is one of the worst ones I've seen in a while. From BZ Studio, this is a 1x8 scale figure of her at only 139 US dollars. And even at a low, low price of 139, I can't recommend this at all. The face doesn't really look like her that much. Yeah, the body is quite detailed, but you know, the face is always the most important part of any figure. And this one right here, unfortunately, looks a bit like a bootleg to me. I don't like it at all. These are the only pictures we're getting over here, but I don't think we can bother with more pictures waiting for them. Even from this pic alone, doesn't look great to me at all. 
Up next, finally, a studio has used this word, NTR. I've seen so many weird and random studio names over the past few months, and I was waiting for that moment someone starts using the word NTR for the name of the studio, and here we go. Okay, so from NTR Studio, we have Hongkai Star Wheel March 7th. So her name is March 7th. Okay, the full price for the standard version is 175 US dollars, high end version 264 US dollars, which presumably you're getting a new torso. This is 1x6 skill. And among so many Hongkai Star Wheel resin figures lately, this is one of the least inspiring ones. Like, very boring looking, don't you think? I could have mistaken this for a Prince of Tennis character. <laughs> uh, I don't think I can recommend this at all. There has been so many amazing figures of Kafka, and this one pales so much in comparison. It looks like a second or third grade figure. <laughs> and the last figure for today, TPA Studio Fairy Tale Wendy Marvel going for a um, hundred and seventy-one US dollars. This one looks fine at one by six scale. I don't think I've seen this character among genuine scale figures, right? Or are there any at all? I can't remember. You know that effect part over there is so unnecessary. She would be fine with that rock base alone. I know that maybe this is a reflection of her ability. Is she a win user or something like that? But anyways, this effect part over here feels rather out of place in my opinion. Otherwise, the figure looks fine the way it is. And that concludes figures on pre-order this week, 24th to 29th July 2023. Which figure will you pre-order this week? Let me know down in the comments below. For me, yeah, I want that Kama figure from FGO by Claynell and Aniplex Plus. That 2B figure by Aniplex, I'm quite attracted to it as well. And then the third one, the unexpected poison for me was that Max Factory Chunli figure. The price is quite hard to swallow, but man, that has to be one of the very best. I think it is hands down the very best looking Chunli figure I've seen. So yeah, that concludes to this video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video today, please do give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel for figure news every week as well as figure reviews. Until then, see you guys again very soon. Goodbye.